I'm not going to be able to go very deep in the stand because it's quite dense, but I'll see what I can do to try to move in so you get a, a slightly better view of what this looks like. See, I think that's kind of a wet spot there. having a lot of trouble moving through here. It's quite dense and there's a lot of coarse weed debris and I also can't see my feet very well. So it's hard to find good footing. There we go. You can see the vegetation is very tall above me here. Oh Both no, the trees. is it there? No, it's <laughs> There we go. Cheryl oh, found God, perhaps there. a better path. Oh yeah, so if you look down, you can see Cheryl. This is a, yeah, so these trees are actually, how tall would you guess these, these cedars that you're by are? Uh, okay, I'm standing beside this one here, uh -huh. and I am 1.75 meters tall. So okay. it's gotta be, ooh. Maybe, it's hard to see the top of it from here. Maybe six or seven meters tall, is that? It's got to be at least five. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, maybe six. Yeah, so five or six meters, and it looks like right around us here, so I see. Behind me here is definitely taller than that, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think lots of these are, uh, you know, at least seven or eight meters now in height. And in uh, diameter... So looking around, I see, I see a couple of... Uh, Western hemlocks, some western red cedars. I don't think I see too many Douglas fir right in this particular spot. Do you that's right. Again, that's the microsite planting for you, though, because we're kind of in a, a low, flat area, and not far from us is actually an open pond. And so this okay. is not your ideal spot. If mm -hmm. there's some raised microsites in here, that would be okay for Douglas fir. But this is a much better spot for uh, cedar and hemlock. Got it. A little happier in this little microsite. How, how's the spacing look to you? Does it does, does this look about what the planting spacing was, or kind of the planted spacing plus some the hemlocks coming in in addition well, to that? Well, that's right. It's actually more dense than mm -hmm. the planting spacing now because of all of these you know sort of random ingrowth of western hemlock on top of it. Um, but in terms of the spacings of the um, you know the the most preferred. Uh, trees. In this case, the cedar looks good to me, yeah. Do you tend to get, so we know we get a lot of western hemlock seedlings that come in naturally, do you tend to get a, a decent amount of, would, would you get a decent amount of cedar and um, Douglas fir coming in on their own as well? Uh, not as much. You know, it's, it's interesting because, um, you know, cedar starts out fairly slowly and um, interestingly it does particularly well around here after fires mm -hmm. um, or, or actually on disturbed soils so that's actually where i see the most uh, okay. successful natural regeneration of cedar and douglas fir it also likes some um, you know open um you know fairly disturbed um, forest floor mm -hmm. conditions and the but the interesting thing about douglas fir is it doesn't have a good cone crop very often. Okay. Also, Douglas fir has quite a long what we call periodicity between good seed crops. And, and, and this is the interesting thing, if it was a natural disturbance, fire often stimulates, mm -hmm. it stresses the uh, surviving trees and stimulates them to produce a cone crop. But that's not the case in, in this situation in the absence of a fire, a big, big fire. So, you know, you could easily go 10 years between good cone crops with Douglas fir. Okay. So, so part of the regeneration just, a so part of the regeneration just would have, natural regeneration would have to do a lot with the timing uh, of the, the cut and if it was around a, a period when, when there was a good cone crop. Oh, you can't predict it though. That's the yeah, problem yeah. is, you, you know, nobody knows for sure when mm -hmm. those good years yeah. are going to come. Mm -hmm. So you can't even time your harvest around it. Mm -hmm. There's just no way. 
And the seed is really interesting because all of these conifers, the seed doesn't store itself up in the soil. So when the seed matures in the cone and it, you know, um, falls out of those trees, you know, in the autumn or over a winter, uh, they really need to germinate that very next spring. Their viability is almost nothing after that. Okay. So. All right, thank you.